So I have three terrariums to build and an absolute load of wood. So we have all of this, which is stuff I already had, and then we have all of this and this. So what I'm thinking is I want to use this type of wood for two of the tanks because I could easily fill up a lot more than two of the tanks with this wood in particular. But for this first tank, I'm going to use all the stuff I already had or mostly the stuff I already had. So this kind of has like a, a certain look to it. And all, I think all of it came from the 55 gallon Blackwater Aquarium I set up a long time ago. And it all has this like nice, weird, groovy look. And a couple of pieces I had in my iguanas cage. So now they're all like holy and stuff, which is really cool. And I think all like these three pieces were all together at one, uh, at one time, but they all kind of broke off as the isopods ate them. So if I, I use like these pieces into the background, then I can kind of position pots around them and stuff like that and like plant stuff into them, which is going to be pretty cool if I have air plants that I can put it right into these hole, like all these holes. And then I have this piece, which again has like holes and stuff, kind of the same look, but it can come out and kind of be a perch or whatnot. And then there's this piece, which again, like the same deal, but kind of weirdly structured and whatnot. And then this piece is newer, but it kind of has the same vibe going on. So I think that it would be cool onto the background. And then we have these three pieces, which I think would look really cool coming out of the background. So then the geckos can crawl on them and then they can be intertwined with the pieces of wood and what, and, and different things and the plants too. They can be intertwined with the plants. That's what I was trying to say. And then I have this, I'm not entirely sure if I want to use this for this one or whatnot, but geez, why do I keep saying whatnot? but it would look really amazing coming out of the background like this. And this is an old piece from the iguana cage. So I think that would look really great, but I'm not entirely sure if it's what I want to go for or what I want to use it for. I honestly, I, it's really cool, but I feel like it might just need to be done with, with using it because I've just already used it and stuff. And if I use it in something else, then it's kind of going to look lame because I've already used it. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure. So maybe I could break it up and just put it into the soil somewhere. But then we have a piece like this, and I'm not entirely sure if this is going to go with this terrarium or more with the other terrariums, but this is a root. This is a stick, which I think will go better with the other tanks, but it, it's kind of like a different type of look than these pieces. And then I was thinking about using some of these. These are from a raspberry plant, and it would be kind of cool to have this long one kind of twisting around pieces in a way that would just kind of add like another another texture and, uh, you know, kind of diversitize it and whatnot. And along with that root piece, I have a bunch of root pieces that might look really cool coming out of the background. So I'll try those, but I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with those yet. And then if these pieces don't completely cover it, then I have a bunch of bark that I will use to cover it. So then I can use the bare, the bare minimum amount of expanding foam that I can to save some money and, and stuff. So this is kind of it. And then there's one piece that I'm definitely going to have in it. Whether or not I have it part of the background, I'm not sure. But this is definitely going to be coming out like this. And I'm going to have to shave it off a little bit on the bottom. But I think if I had it attached there and then it comes all the way up to the corner at the top, that is definitely happening. So I have a plan and I think it's going to be pretty cool. So I guess I'm just going to start. And then I have a bunch of pots and pieces of foam and different things that I might use to create planters because I want the whole background just to be filled with planters because I have lots of vines coming down and plants coming up and different things. So because I can't plant the bottom as much, it's only like a 10 gallon down there, then I need lots of stuff throughout the, the whole tank. As you can see, I have the drainage layer and the piece of glass in the bottom. If you want to see how I do that, check out the earlier videos on this project. But here I have the first 55 gallon. And as I said, I wanted to go with that specific wood look, this kind of interesting look of all this wood that mostly I found in local forests, kind of. Uh, like a little bit decomposed type wood 
and I, I really enjoyed this look and I had enough to kind of complete it with the whole tank. So I just laid it in there, I had to figure out how to tape it in and stuff to get things how I wanted it and I put pots in and I used expanding foam and then I went ahead and got the other two 55 gallon tanks and did the exact same thing with them and added in bark and other material as needed to create whatever actual uh, things I wanted uh, for this project. So here you can see the expanding foam now that it has cured. Uh, it's not, it's very smooth on the outside, very like bubbly type thing. And then I have some roots and stuff laid out for me to install later on. But I got a little bit carried away here and I just started looking into things and I knew I wanted this piece of wood to go into one of the tanks at the bottom but not be attached with the expanding foam and just like adding uh, laying out the roots I kind of wanted to lay this out and I wanted to plant a plant in this uh, specific piece of wood so I was kind of drilling it out there and here you can then see all tanks uh, put up and like I said I was getting a little bit carried away I added in some plants just to see what it would look like uh, because I got excited because this is the first time it has had a background and I kind of had an opportunity to play around with that. So now comes a rather grueling process that uh, takes a long time and is just not comfortable, especially working in a fish tank that's deep like this, and this is carving the foam. So you want to expose the porous part of the foam on the inside, so then when you go to paint it with the dry lock, which I will show you uh, what, what that's all about, uh, in this video as well. It will hold on to the the foam and it'll look better because it isn't on uh, some shiny flat surface or not flat but like a uh, bubbly surface like the normal outside of the foam is but instead it's on the uh, the coarse surface that kind of looks like dirt kind of looks like rock type of look makes everything blend in it blends in very well with the wood and everything and uh, like I said it makes this dry lock stick. So I used uh, a, a original like basement dry lock and then I used uh, charcoal coloring and terracotta coloring together and mixed it in to then uh, start off on that and I didn't uh, finish that piece before I started carving out uh, this next tank and I'm just doing all the tanks at the same time because it's the same process the same thing and for carving it out uh, I use various things to sit on, and then I use just various sharp objects. Generally, I need I use needle nose pliers as well as a uh, razor blade, and then like a razor blade cutter knife, and a smaller razor blade cutter knife, and even an exacto knife, and just like anything that I can get my hands on because there's so many different angles, especially with uh, these big tall tanks like this. So here you can see. At the top, I had some of the dry lock uh, tested out, but this one is pretty much done, and it can be such a pain to work with, especially when the expanding foam hasn't completely cured. Cured. I was kind of on a time uh, budget. That's not how that works. I was on a time budget, apparently. That's what my brain wants to say right now. Uh, so I was trying to get things done as fast as possible and I couldn't just wait for the expanding foam to completely cure, uh, which might take uh, a couple days or whatever. So I just had to do it. And what that meant basically was that I was going to run into pockets of uncured uh, expanding foam and then my hand would get kind of gross and I'd have to deal with that and that really sucks. But once they were finally done being cut out, I could start on the dry lock. Uh, covering. So I used to use silicone or silicon, uh, like brown silicone, and then this is what people generally do. They use brown silicon and then they'll put a dry uh, dirt over it and that'll be the background. Well, I found that dry lock can be used the same way uh, or very similarly, even though it's not like a silicone type thing, it's more like a paint, but it is a water waterproof proofer type uh, uh, paint thing and you can get it in cans and then you just put it on and you can actually add on uh, soil and things to it and they kind of stick on and it makes it blend in really well. So I mix this dark dry lock 
together. Uh, it comes in this gray. You can get uh, quick create uh, coloring like terracotta or uh, charcoal is what I generally use because terracotta you can kind of get a brown and then charcoal you can make it dark and I had to buy a can for these as well and I had some leftover from the green iguana enclosure that I did or something uh, that I did yeah I think it was the green iguana enclosure but these were the first enclosures that I tried adding on dirt as well and it actually worked out really 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 well so I definitely re recommend this. So I did this with the first tank, and then I went ahead and did the same thing with the second tank. And then any gaps in the sides or anywhere, I just used brown silicone. So I still had that on, on hand. And what I threw on was uh, a mixture of, I put sand on. I had some light colored sand and some uh, light covered uh, gray dust uh, or, you know, rock dust. And then I used a mixture of uh, just some some like bark and uh, wood dust and then as well as uh, dry eco earth that I just uh, completely broke apart and I believe probably peat moss as well to put on. And then I went through with the roots and I put those in with some super glue to kind of make it look like there's roots coming out of the background and stuff. And finally, once everything was uh, dried and cured enough uh, for, how, for how much I wanted anyway, uh, I made sure all the dirt came out because I wanted to put in a proper charcoal layer before I put in anything. And at this point, the background is uh, basically done in all the tanks. This is what it took and uh, it was a long process mainly just the cutting out part is really long the painting isn't too bad especially with dry lock it washes off the brushes it washes off your hands and everything a lot easier to work with than silicone and in my experience it's kind of longer lasting it, it works really really well for its job so uh, i definitely recommend it and it's what i like to use and it it does the the dirt and stuff really sticks to it and even if it doesn't it's brown colored and it's not like uh, very bad or you could just have it gray colored or whatever you want to color it really uh, is whatever color you can get now the third one I ended up doing off camera because uh, I simply ran out of dry lock and I didn't uh, have any so here you can see um, I'm finally I'm mixing some up I got uh, new but I didn't get coloring properly. So I tried to add in some crushed up charcoal into it to see if that would color it, and it very much did not. So the last one that I colored ended up being pretty much pink because I used uh, pretty much just uh, just like a tiny bit of whatever was left of the charcoal coloring and just the terracotta. Uh, ended up ended up being a bit of a pink color, but I wasn't too concerned, and I'm still not too concerned because uh, you can't really see it, and uh, it's covered in dirt and stuff, so it's really not that big of a deal. But I thought that it was kind of interesting that way. So in the next video, I will be uh, probably doing the soil of the enclosures. I'm gonna have a separate video about just making the soil, and then I'll be making the doors and then I will be setting up the enclosures. Whether or not I'll make the doors and set up the enclosures in the same video, I'm not entirely sure. But for now, this has been this video. This is how you make a background with dry lock for 55 gallon vertical tanks. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, like it down below. If you have any comments or concerns, put in comments below. And if you're more content, then subscribe. Have a fantastic day.